Man, it has been way too long. Welcome back to another video, everyone. Finally, oh my God, it's been almost three months since I've uploaded. It's been a crazy time coming toward the end of school, wrapping up college. I've had internships to do. I had a summer program I was doing. I just didn't have as much time to make videos, but oh, it's just so good to finally finally be back on the Jackstown YouTube channel making content and honestly we were a little bit in the dog days of sports with kind of just baseball for me at least no football and basketball but now that football season's back and I've just been desperately wanting to make content once again for you guys we are finally finally back and we're gonna be making some football content for this video because football season's back great time of year we're two weeks in it's so early we've only taken baby steps into the 2023 nfl season but i thought what better way to start our football content for this season and make our little comeback than do a tier list, which are some of my favorite videos. And we're gonna be ranking every NFL team up to this point after two weeks. And then because the season's so young, maybe based on their expectations coming into this year, we're gonna rank who I think is a contender, who isn't, in what tier each team belongs based on what I believe they're capable of. So we're gonna try to mix in what we've seen in this brief two week period of the season and what like I, I expect to see or what we should be seeing or what I think this team is capable of. So we're kind of projecting forward from the present as well and trying to gather a little bit from last season and the off season. So all that put together, this is my first NFL contenders tier list of the 2023 season. Make sure to comment your opinions, but without further ado guys, let's start with the tier list. So these are the four tiers. We have top tier contenders. These are the no doubt guys. Not even a question, easily a Super Bowl contender in my opinion. They have a legitimate chance to win the whole thing. Dark Horse, that just means, you know, I think they can win a Super Bowl. They're, they're in it, but it's, it's still kind of a long shot, but I think a team in the Dark Horse tier still has an outside shot to contend for the Super Bowl. In the mix is usually a playoff team or something close to it. Usually a team that is at least gonna play some meaningful football and not have a terrible record, a somewhat competitive team, up to a team that might even win their division, but maybe be in a weaker division. So fringe playoff teams, teams that are close to the playoffs, and teams that might make the playoffs, but I don't think can actually contend. And last but not least, our fourth tier, the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. I mean, look, a lot of teams, we, we know the memes at this point, tank for Caleb, right? He's probably gonna be the number one pick for next year. So those are the teams that are unfortunate bottom feeders and yeah I think that speaks for itself so I thought about having five tiers but I felt like a fifth one was kind of hard I feel like these four tiers should cover basically all the teams without further ado guys it's been way too long let's just get started we're gonna start with the Arizona Cardinals I think it's going in alphabetical order here guys we're gonna start off with a bang Caleb Williams sweet stakes I mean guys the the Cardinals they they are kind of obviously tanking or at least what they did this offseason indicated they were tanking they cut colt mccoy we don't know when kyler murray's come back coming back so many losses in the offseason they cut deandre hopkins jj watt retires they've been competitive through two games but it's i would be shocked if the cardinals weren't one of the worst teams in the league which is unfortunate because just two years ago they were a really good team but the cardinals are probably the number one team in the caleb williams sweet sweepstakes so the Atlanta Falcons are 2-0. I don't think they're a contender. It's That would be a long shot. I'm going to say they're in the mix. So I know they're 2-0, but it's so early. They're still a young team. But B. John Robinson looks great. This offensive line looks really good. And they just beat the Packers, who looked really good in week one against the Bears. So I think the Falcons in the NFC South, along with the Saints, are probably the two teams that have the best chance to win that division. They can win their division. They might be a playoff team. But with Desmond Ritter at the helm, I don't think right now the Falcons are a contender or even a dark horse, in my opinion, which I think most people would agree with. Then we have the Baltimore Ravens. So coming into this year, I would have said they're a dark horse contender. And... I, I thought I'm gonna keep them in dark horse contender. So some people think the Ravens are a legitimate contender. They're they're really close. I, I think they have a chance to win the Super Bowl, but I don't think they're in that top tier of teams because I still wanna see what Lamar Jackson can do. I, I, 
I don't think he's proven himself in the playoffs. I don't think he's proven himself as a great passer yet, but things look good for the Ravens. So if they probably win 12 or more games this year, I might change my mind. They've looked good through two weeks. They just beat the Bengals. They beat the Texans. They're 2-0. and So, But I still want to see more from the Ravens. Maybe call me a hater. Call me a non-believer for the Ravens. I don't think I'm a hater. I just don't think the Ravens are in that top tier yet. So we're going to move on to the Buffalo Bills. They did not look good week one, but they bounced back nicely against the Raiders. No doubt the Bills, I think, are a top-notch contender. I mean, it's Josh Allen, enough said. Still think he's a top three, top four quarterback for sure. So I think the Bills are definitely a contender. Carolina Panthers, they have, oh my God, the Panthers offense has looked ugly through two weeks. So like, I want to say they're in the mix because they're in the NFC South, but I'm leaning toward Caleb Williams sweepstakes. I know it's only two weeks. I might've said in the mix, but let's be honest. It's a rookie QB, which is which is a rare, it's a situation where that team rarely makes the playoffs. You rarely see rookie quarterbacks make the playoffs and Bryce Young, they don't have, a, Panthers just don't have the makings of a really good team or even a good team in general because that O-line is not good. The run game is not very good. And it's just, it's just been a struggle through two games. So I'm not a believer in the Panthers. Obviously, I don't think they would take Caleb Williams, but I don't think they're even in the mix, in my opinion. Same with the Bears. The Bears have not looked good through two weeks. Um, a lot of people were hoping the Bears made that jump and they still could only two weeks, but the offense doesn't look good. The defense doesn't look good. Their defensive coordinator resigned through after two weeks, which was kind of crazy to hear. But yeah, the Bears are unfortunately one of the worst teams it looks like right now in the NFL. The Cincinnati Bengals, they're 0-2. There is room for concern for the Bengals. There's definitely concern there, but I still think the Bengals are a top tier team. It's Joe Burrow. I still think he's the second best quarterback in the league after Mahomes. I think they started off 0-2 last year, so I'm not really that concerned. Of course, Joe Burrow's calf is the most concerning thing. If he stays healthy though, I have no doubt the Bengals are a contender and that they'll figure it out. So I'm gonna put the Bengals in the top tier. The Browns, so, uh, you know what? I'm gonna say the Browns are in the mix. I might have said Dark Horse Contender because they have a great offensive line. They have a good defensive line with Miles Garrett, of course. Just a really solid all-around team, but losing Nick Chubb, I can't overstate how terrible of a loss that is. I mean, he might be the best running back in the entire league. So if they can still block for Jerome Ford or if they sign someone else, bring back Kareem Hunt, it's all contingent on how they fill in the run game for Nick Chubb's absence. But right now, it's hard to replace arguably the best offensive player on that team and Nick Chubb's such a great running back. So just a terrible injury. I think that moves them down a tier for now because of just how great Nick Chubb is. The Dallas Cowboys are a top tier contender. I wouldn't have said that without a, a doubt coming into this year, but they honestly have been the best team in the NFL through two weeks. The defense looks insanely good. Micah Parsons might be the best defensive player in the league. That defense looks ferocious, athletic. They've demolished the two New York teams. Obviously, I can't wait for them to maybe play a couple better offensive teams, but for now, the Cowboys look phenomenal, especially that defense alone, how great it's looked, has, looks, makes them look like a top tier contender. The Denver Broncos, Broncos country, let's ride. No, they're 0-2, but I still think they're in the mix. They're not a bottom feeder. I still think with Sean Payton, I think they'll find a way to at least win seven, eight games. But so because it's early, I'm going to say they're in the mix and they're definitely obviously trying to be in the mix. So I think they'll figure something out but I don't even know if they're a playoff team. So, but I, I think they'll probably be playing meaningful football, but here we go again. The Broncos are 0-2 and just a terrible collapse to the commanders and back-to-back -back games where they've had terrible second halves. So I don't like what I've seen from the Broncos, but I still think they're in the mix. The Lions, are they a contender, dark horse contender? I'm gonna say the Lions are a dark horse contender. I know they lost last week to the Seahawks in overtime. That defense was really bad last week, but I still think the Lions are going to win their division. And I think they're probably the third best team in the NFC, if I had to guess, after the Niners and Eagles. So I think that makes them a dark horse contender. And I don't think their division is gonna be awful either. I think the Packers showed that they're pretty decent. We'll see what happens with the Vikings. 
maybe it's not the greatest division, but I still think the Lions will win that division and they have some good pieces. So yeah, I'll be generous. Maybe I just like the Lions. They're a dark horse contender. The Packers, they're, yeah, they're in the mix. And the difference between them and the Lions is last year, the Lions were already kind of building up their team. So there's a lot of continuity from last year, but the Packers this year are still very new with Jordan Love. He only has two starts under his belt. So I think I've seen more from the Lions to make them slightly ahead of the Packers, but the Packers could definitely win the division. I think they're the second best team. I think they're gonna play meaningful football and they'll be in the playoffs probably, uh, or no, they'll be in the playoff hunt, could be a playoff team. So I'll say they're in the mix. The Houston Texans, are in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes, no doubt about it. I know CJ Stroud could, CJ Stroud's actually looked good so far. I think all things considered for a rookie QB through two games, but let's not kid ourselves. The Texans are not gonna contend. They should be one of the worst teams in the league. Same thing, I think with the Colts, even though I think the Colts are a little bit better than the Texans, they just beat them. Hopefully Anthony Richardson's okay, but he looks really good as well through two weeks. But I just think the Colts all around are a little bit better than the Texans. Maybe they have a little bit better of an offense. And I just think Anthony Richardson's rushing upside really adds to that. And Jonathan Taylor, we'll see if he comes back. Definitely don't think the Colts are in the mix, but I think they're slightly better than the Texans. That's not even that important. They're both in the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. We move on to my Jacksonville Jaguars. Look, I, I'm gonna try to be objective. It's a hard thing to do. I'm still gonna say the Jags are a dark horse contender. I mean, they made the playoffs last year. I really like the Calvin Ridley edition, obviously. And I think the Jags are going to be a very good team this year. I think they'll win their division quite comfortably. And then we'll see where they go from there. But I think that with Trevor Lawrence's development, Calvin Ridley being a legitimate number one receiver, this team has the makings of a dark horse Super Bowl contender. They might be a, a year or two away from being one of the top tier teams, but this is a very, very good team. And I love Doug Peterson. What a great coach. So I think the Jags are a top or a dark horse contender. The Kansas City Chiefs, I mean, the defending Super Bowl champions, no question, top tier contender. As long as they have Patrick Mahomes, and Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey, this team will be the easiest top tier contender ever. So yeah, no questions, nothing further to say. Kansas City Chiefs top tier contender. The Chargers, okay. Um, Coming into this year, I would have said a dark horse contender. And I know it's only two weeks, but man, I, I'm not a fan of Brandon Staley. I don't think they should have brought him back. I think the Chargers are in the mix. They'll probably be a playoff team, but they're 0-2, their defense looks awful. Their offense, it looks fine, but it could improve. But the defense is a problem. Brandon Staley, I think, is a problem right now. So I think that moves them down through two weeks. I think they're just in the mix. Again, probably a playoff team, but I don't think they can win a Super Bowl with Brandon Staley at the helm, unfortunately. The Rams, you know, Caleb, they, maybe coming into this year, they had an argument for the Caleb Williams sweepstakes. But you know what? The Rams have impressed me through two weeks. They, they held their own against the Niners. They won in Seattle, home of the 12th man. So I'm gonna put the Rams in the mix out of respect for what they've done through two weeks. I think they've been impressive, all things considered for what we expected from them. Sean McVay, Matthew Stafford, give them some respect. Aaron Donald, of course. And how about Puka Nakua with what, 25 catches through two games, which makes no sense. I mean, just a rookie fifth round pick, I think. What an awesome story he's been. So yeah, give the Rams some respect, putting them in the mix. The Raiders, I think the Raiders are fringe, fringedly in the mix, if that's a word. They're in the mix with Jimmy G, Josh McDaniels, Josh Jacobs. I think they'll, they'll, they'll try to win but I don't love their defense at all. I think their defense is bad. I don't think they're a playoff team, but I think they'll be in it. I don't think they'll be that bad. I think they're a little bit better than these five teams. So I will give the Raiders the in the mix tier. The Miami Dolphins, they've, they're two and oh, they've looked really good. The Tua Tyree connection looks incredible. I don't wanna say they're a top tier contender yet. I do wanna see a little more, but I think they're a dark horse contender. They're a contender regardless. Even if you're a dark horse, I think you have an outside shot to win the Super Bowl. Maybe if the Dolphins, you know, if we see some more games like this, the way they've started, if we see a bigger sample size of that, I will comfortably move them up into top tier if they keep doing this. But for now, I'm gonna keep them in the dark horse. It's still a little early, but they've looked really good so far. The Minnesota Vikings, 
they're they're in the mix. They I don't think they can win a Super Bowl. It's pretty obvious that you know what you're going to get from Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson's the best receiver in the league, I think. Uh, although Tyreek Hill is making an argument, but regardless, I think Justin Jefferson's the best, but Kirk Cousins is a very solid QB, but that defense is not very good. The offensive line is not very good. They're 0 and 2, and clearly this team isn't at that level, but they should still probably contend for a playoff spot. They could win the division. I don't think they will, but they could. And I think they'll be playing meaningful football. I don't think they're a bottom feeder. Just having Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson is enough of a floor for this team to make them an in the mix team and a team that will, will still be in it for most of the season, I think. Same with the Patriots. I think the Patriots will be in it. They're, not, they're trying to win, obviously. I think Belichick, at least on defense, the Patriots, the, the, the experience of Belichick and the defensive unit, I think will be enough to keep them in the mix. I am highly question, <laughs> their offense is highly questionable. I'm very concerned about that. I don't know the ceiling of Mac Jones, but I think the floor is enough to make the Pats in the mix. The Saints, like maybe you can argue dark horse contender, but their offense hasn't looked good and that O-line isn't what it used to be. That defense isn't what, it's still good. It's a good defense. I just want to see a little bit more before I say dark horse contender. I do, yeah, the Saints are 2-0, but I'm going to give them the in the mix tier. They, they can definitely win the division, but can they win a Super Bowl? I haven't seen enough from the offense. I just haven't seen enough in general. I mean, it's new quarterback with Derek Carr. I want to see how good Michael Thomas is, honestly. I, is he going to be back to the number one receiver he once was? If all those things happen, the, the Saints keep playing good defense, maybe I'll move them up. But for now, we're going to put them in the mix. The New York Giants, they're also in the mix. They did not look good the first... They looked horrible the first game. Then the first half against the Cardinals, they did not look good. But they somehow figured it out with a miraculous comeback. I think the Giants are kind of like the Vikings, where I think they're going to be a little bit worse than last year. Fight for a playoff spot, maybe make the playoffs. So I think they're in the mix, but I don't think either them nor the Vikings have enough of a ceiling to be a contender. So I'm gonna put the Vi or the Giants in the mix. The Jets, see like the Jets are the weirdest. No, you know what? I'm gonna say they're in the mix. So their defense alone keeps them in the mix. I, I mean, obviously the Aaron Rodgers injury is just the most devastating injury. Like, I mean, it's just awful. Obviously Zach Wilson's such a downgrade and we, I wanna see more from him, maybe a couple more weeks, but it looks like he's kind of continuing the way he's played his whole career up until this point, and I think that removes them from contention. I think with Rodgers, I would have put them in the Dark Horse Contender tier, but unfortunately, after the Achilles injury, they're going to move down a tier for me. Philadelphia Eagles, I mean, they got to the Super Bowl last year, almost won it, no doubt top tier contender. I mean, if you want to argue who's who's looked better between the Cowboys and Eagles, maybe the Cowboys have the Eagles looked amazing through two games despite being 2-0. No, they haven't looked amazing, but it's Jalen Hurts, it's AJ Brown. The, the team is stacked like top to bottom everywhere. One of the best rosters in the league. So no doubt, Eagles top tier. The Steelers have not looked good through two games, even though they won against the Browns, or at least offensively, they haven't looked good through two games. So I'm concerned about that, but the Steelers are one of those teams where they're always in the hunt, and it seems like they play their best football in the second half, so I think they will do that, and the Steelers are always in the mix. I, I don't ever remember them being in any sweepstake for any top pick. They're always in the mix, they're always fighting for a playoff spot, or they're probably in the playoffs. So we're going to continue that with the Steelers. I think they, they'll definitely, they'll definitely be a respectable team by the end of the season. I mean, Mike Tomlin has never been below 500. So if you're going to go on history, I think in the mix is a good spot for them. The Seahawks, I mean, I figured it'd be the most popular tier, but we're going to go in the mix again. The Seahawks have a solid offense, very good actually, with Geno Smith and the tandem of Metcalf and Lockett. Coming off a big win in Detroit, I didn't think they'd win there. So that was kind of a surprising overtime victory, but the O-line's not the best. The run game's not great, and the defense isn't very good. So despite having Pete Carroll and having some good offensive pieces, I don't think the Seahawks are a contender, but just like last year, I think they're a fringe playoff team kind of fighting for a playoff spot. So the Seahawks are in the mix. 49ers, easily top tier. Them and the Eagles, if you want to argue, or the Cowboys. I think those are the three, clearly the three best teams in the NFC. And actually, just to correct 
what I said earlier, I forgot about the Cowboys. The Lions are probably the fourth best team in the NFC. So yeah, definitely the Niners. I mean, you could argue they've looked like the best team <laughs> in the leagues through two weeks and Brock Purdy's looked great. Run game, McCaffrey looks, everything looks great. Defense, everything. The Niners are quite the football team. So easily top tier. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How about Baker Mayfield 2-0? Okay, this is extremely bold. I want to say Dark Horse. Okay, this is... Uh, Baker, why are you going to do this to me? Okay, Baker alone. Just, I, I feel like the Bucks love to play for Baker. I love his energy. I think he's a good leader, actually. He's led some clutch drives already this season. 2-0 for the Bucks. Have a shot to win the division. Mike Evans has pretty clearly already built a good connection with Baker Mayfield. And you also have Chris Godwin. So that passing game and that defense, Todd Bowles always has a good defense. So... Look, maybe I'm, I'm a victim of Baker mania, but I'm going to put the Bucks in the Dark Horse tier. Don't sleep on the Bucks. They've looked pretty dang good, honestly, on both ends of the football in big moments too when it matters most. Tennessee Titans, I think they're in the mix. I think they're the second place team in the AFC South. I think after the Jags, they should probably be the second best team. And I could see them winning seven or eight games, maybe being in the wild card contention, at least with three spots, three wild card spots in each conference. Now, I'm just worried about what Tannehill's gonna do because week one, he looked awful. And then last week, he looked a little better. They actually beat the Chargers and Derrick Henry's just gonna do his thing. And with Vrabel being a very good coach and the defense always being solid, I think that keeps the Titans in the mix. Last but not least, Washington Commanders. Ah, okay, I'll put them in the mix. They're two and oh. But it is a rookie QB they're having, our first year starting QB in Sam Howell. There's a lot of unknown with them. So I'm going to keep them in the mix. But I can understand why, you know, if the Bucks are the 2 0 Bucks are Dark Horse, why not have the Commanders be in the, the or be in Dark Horse instead of in the mix? I don't know. I don't know. I just like Baker's veteran leadership more at this point than Sam Howell. But there's really not too much logic behind me just being. Just being into Baker mania, you know, I just, I just have a feeling about the box. I think they're a dark horse contender. So anyway, guys, that's my tier list. I'm sure you'll disagree with me somewhere. So I'd love to hear your opinions. Make sure to comment what you like about my list, what you might not like about my list. Let me know, comment all your opinions. Love to see them. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're a sports fan and you haven't done so already. And it's so good to be back, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll finally be pumping out more content way more often now. It's good to be back, guys. Thanks so much for watching again. And I'll see you all in the next one.